here's Bailey in our library at home. So one of the things we're doing in training, which admittedly the none of the books I've read uh, support this, but I I don't think most books suggest spending as much time in the training as as I'm doing. Ah, good girl is trying to teach her quickly when she's most most uh, what's it called most impressionable on what she can bite and what she can't. So this she has her little she has her bone which is actually this vitamin fortified artificial bone. I got it because one it has it's good for her if she consumes a little bit of it and two it won't splinter. But I wanted her to put this in a place and then train her where there's maximum amount of tempting things. So she has the frilly rug she has sandals, and these actually are sandals that are hooked up by wires and stuff. Hi, sweetheart. You are so good. You are such a good girl. Such a good girl. Where are you? There you are. You... Such a good girl. But anyways, I, I hate to remotely compare what it's like to raise children and dogs because I mean they are raising a kid is way more work but it, that it is good preparation because with our own children Debbie and I were very adamant about being very strict and very consistent early on and then for the rest of their lives so far they've been just amazingly good well-behaved children that we almost never have to discipline in any way at all. I mean, even as is, um, you know, while well, my hands, I don't know if you can see here, are full of bite marks in that from her chewing on me. Um, and I believe it or not, I do believe it's important uh, at this age for her to be able to chew on me. It's part of how they explore the world. It's just teaching her uh, bite inhibition. But um, so ironically, I volunteer my hand all the time for her to, I'm losing out to the bone, but, uh, you know, it's, it's something, one of those things that if you're intense early on, you can, you have a lifetime well-behaved, uh, dog that you have to do almost no discipline. And even as is, we've only had her a week and it's not like, you know, uh, you know, obviously with a puppy, it's a baby, you know, there's no corporal punishment involved. It's just, just little sounds to, let her know when she what she's done or not done, because you know dogs are bred to want to please you anyway. What are you doing under there? Where'd your bone go? See, watch. Ah! See, she knows not to stop. And then I just offer her an alternative and say, "There, we'll put it over here." Good girl. <laughs> And that's all there really is to it. And you just have to do it over and over and over again. And if, like I said, dogs are bred to want to please their uh, their owners. So I don't, you know, you don't, you don't ever, you sh you know, you never hit or punish a dog at this age. Because like I said, we're talking about a nine-week-old puppy. I mean, it'd be like spanking your your baby d human for something that it can't really understand but in the case of dogs they are wired to want to do things for their their people so you just show them what you want and try to discourage them from doing what you don't want them to do and hence that's why you can have you know like i said let me show you just give you an idea this is my our library this is here i have our books on the lowest level here and um, you know, lots of stuff around here. It's biteable and breakable and expensive, but as long as I'm willing and have the capability to spend the time, ah, <laughs> and my feet are not chew toys. Good girl. Um, it's pretty easy, but like I said, there's lots of little corrections on when she starts to chew something she shouldn't, and then get her re, uh, re back on something else. Anyways, sorry to bore you, but that's where we're at. Bye-bye.